Hi, I'm Lee Chin Toh from the National University of Singapore. And today I'm here to answer some questions as part of the Lab on the Trip Emerging Investigator Series. So question one, your recent Emerging Investigator Series paper focuses on a liver immune co-culture array for predicting systemic drug-induced skin sensitization. How has your research evolved from your first article to this most recent article? Um, I would say that uh, my earlier work focuses on developing microfluidic liver models um, for liver toxicity testing types of application. So uh, a major motivation for this work is really in trying to extend a lot of our capability and know-how with engineering a microfluidic liver model and coming from a different perspective to look into how drug um, metabolism can manifest as toxic side effects in other tissues. And in this case, we are specifically focusing on um, drug-induced skin sensitization. Question two. What aspect of your work are you most excited about at this moment? I would say I'm very excited about creating um, human-based um, microscale tissue models um, to look at inter- and intra-tissue interactions in the context of various complex human diseases, including um, developmental syndromes and uh, cancer. And hopefully um, by um, being able to mimic more complex biological processes in these in vitro systems, we can better predict a lot of these uh, drug responses in patients. Question three, in your opinion, how concerned should we be about systemic drug-induced skin sensitization. Are other tissues also susceptible? I would say we should be fairly concerned because drug-induced skin sensitization is one of the most common adverse drug reactions, and almost any ad medication can cause skin sensitization. There are some classes of medication, including NSAIDs, antiepileptics, uh, as well as antibiotics, which have a higher rate of causing uh, skin eruptions than others. Um, Reactive drug metabolites can also cause toxic effects in various other organs, uh, most commonly the liver, the heart, as well as the muscle. Question 4. What do you find most challenging about your research? I would say it's often very challenging um, to find the appropriate assays to be able to measure the biological functions and response of cells growing on a microfluidic platform as sufficient sensitivity, um, consistency, and throughput. Question five. In which upcoming conference or events may our readers meet you? I will be attending the upcoming Microtask conference in Taiwan as the co-chair of the Poster Award Committee. Question six. How do you spend your spare time? Um, I would say just hanging out with family and um, perhaps yoga to do a bit of relaxation. Question seven, which profession would you choose if you are not a scientist? Being a vet has always been a childhood dream, so I guess in some ways I am still trying to do my part to help animals by developing um, animal alternatives for drug testing applications. Question eight, can you share one piece of career-related advice or wisdom with other early career scientists? I'm not sure whether this is really a advice, but this is something I find helpful for myself. I often toggle between uh, two states of mind, between a, a dreamer and a realist. Uh, the dreamer helps me see the big picture and often helps in maintaining a certain level of optimism, especially during difficult times, uh, while the realist um, keeps me grounded on uh, practical and feasibility issues to make sure that I can still execute and deliver.